temperature uh, on uh, a painting that you've got a warm background. So you have to trust your palette because because cones in our eye are forcing that that color to move towards the complement. I put it on here and look at how dark it is. So everything's relative and that's one reason why I try to get my painting covered as quickly as possible. Most of your planning, have you entered into an agreement with MoMA, your college, the local art museum? And you want to have it be as small as possible so your website, so your web page loads quickly. If you have big files, it takes a long time for the web page to load. And if you have small files, the web page loads, loads really quickly. To talk to him about his inspiration for this because I, I think it's a bit of a departure and a very successful one. I really, really like this machine. So this was a sketch I did a larger version, which I figured we would, you know, keep in very painting. I put it in the show. Somebody come on and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he was a sailor, he had a, a small merchant vessel. The little drawing that I made for my dad, and then I start to look at this and I think, hmm, I haven't gone very far. The idea was to wear white. Okay, so just to get an idea as to how deep I went, yet I don't want to do a nocturne or anything like that, but it gives me a lots of room to take the color And when I make my sand, I like to have something chewy. I want you to feel like you can walk in that sand. I want that chewy, kind of like you can move that sand around like Play-Doh, like some kind of textural thing. It's a textural experience. In nature, everything is random. So sometimes I don't look at what I'm painting. I don't want to be too organized with it. <laughs> because sometimes if you look, you tend to get dainty. What was it about his materials that made his paintings look so fundamentally different? He said, Michael, you've got to remember or realize, rather, that at one time artists used to all make their own paint. Little light went under my head. Well, if they can make their own paint, so can I. I paint a lot of ships, uh, old ships, mostly what I call the age of sail. So I paint a lot of battle scenes. How do you create a realistic painting or something that you can't just go out and look at? If I can't go just go out in a boat in 1812. Uh, it's a process that I call imaginative realism. Uh, I love that he just served into sketched octopus and starfish on a piece of lined paper like you would have on a, on a, on a legal pad to take my his notes in a meeting. <laughs> just a very simple sketch on a sheet, but then uh, of just about one year later, creating this incredible sort of juicy, meaty, luscious oil composition of two octopi. Uh, Roger bought a sailboat, a little sailboat, and gave me my first sailboat. Robin forgot to tell me about the boom, and once he <laughs> into the lake,